is when Iman has become established. And I think at this time the Iman aspect has not become established yes. properly. And you cannot force some of these things. Yes. And you cannot discuss some of these things. Therefore, let's first try to bring that Iman back. Up to now, Iman comes from God, but at least we should prepare the ground. How would you suggest preparing the ground? We, we talk about the akhlaq, we talk about the ethics, yes. we talk about the thought. We talk about what the Sufis have said, what the Kalam people have said. We talk about that because a lot of that is relevant today. But it's because modern scholars cannot relate those ideas with the modern problems. Your influence has been immense and, and it's yet to be recognized. I think that it's for these coming generations will see that if they'll do the work, the, if they'll do the archaeology of, of the ideas, yes. I think they'll end up in the rock bed of Sayyidina Qibr Atas for a lot of, of, of the, the really brilliant ideas of, of our time yes. in many things. And, and some of our students before, it was the student from here, they understood when they went to America, they studied with Ismail Faruqi at the uh, Temple. Temple University. Yes. Yes. And there, you, there are some people from Afghanistan, from the Arab world and so on. But the, the Malaysians, well, they understood better the problem of the West, secular and so on, than the others. You know, there's one question, why is it in Malaysia? I said, first of all, of course, well, one answer is because I am here. <laughs> but I think, it's also because only in this Malaysia that you find all the religions. You have Hinduism, you have Buddhism, you have Confucianism, you have Christianity, both Catholic, Protestant, then Muslim. And you, a Muslim, are now living with these people. And there will be some problems about religion now. That's why. That's why we have to establish this. That's why the Muslim must know about their religion and about the others. And as much as them, or better if possible. So in other words, this is the reason why I said that the university must be established. And I, I said there must be an experiment, isn't it? I'm not saying that we are all, we've done everything, no. I said it must be an experiment. In the United States where I'm from, yes. there's over 150 Christian colleges. Yes. And that's in a country that has 300 million uh, people. And you look at the Muslim world, which is over a billion, and we, we can count the, the Islamic colleges on our hands, and most of them are so far yeah. from implementing what you're talking about in terms of the kuliya, yeah. the idea of a, a real university that trains yeah. an intellect in, in, in a full capacity. Why this is possible for this kind of thing to happen is precisely because of a great deal of ignorance a great deal of arrogance, not only there, but outside, in the ministries of education, in, in the prime minister's department. A lot of them not really knowledgeable about these things. They don't, they don't really know things very, very profoundly. Yes. Yes? They just uh, act uh, in, bur in a bur bur bureaucratic manner. They didn't realize that to, to establish things like this and that if you really want to know, you must have really honest people and who are also who are also competent who are also intelligent who have proven their worth academically scholarly and that they must do things fast you cannot afford bureaucracy there is a story you see in our one of our malay hikaya they call it about the, the tailor bird who, who makes very nice, fine nests, yes? But then the monkey comes and... <laughs> and then that story in that hikaya, it says, take notice of this, uh, take note of this... Uh, the monkey. Yes. Yes, be careful. This is, uh, this is an ebara. Ultimately, it goes back to the question of what we call the loss of adab just now. Yes. This question of envy must be got rid of. Yes. <laughs> uh, because the, the, the adab becomes wrong. Yes. The adab becomes merely a kind of etiquette, becomes merely a kind of following. Protocol. Yes. In other words, it's just hiding the real. That's it, what ethics it, means, isn't it? it? Yes. Ethos, character, it's a mask. 
It's a, which be, that's the Greek term for mask. Yes. That means you put a mask. Now you put this mask, tomorrow you put another mask. Yes. Tomorrow you put another <laughs> You are hiding your real self. Yes. Uh, this is what I mean. In other words, the idea of ethics is to get rid of all this and to make it established. To make the stool stable. Yes. Yes, and not co go on making different masks. Yes. <laughs> Get to the orang asli. Ah, yes. yes. <clears throat> the original man. I want to thank you so much, uh, Dr. Al Atas, <laughs> uh, for your. I mean, you're a Hashimi, you're a Sayyid, and and you have the generosity of the Beni Hashim. So this time with us has been very meaningful. So I really want to thank you. Uh, immensely for the time you've given us and may Allah give you tawfiq and also give you your proper place. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you very yes. much. Yes. May Allah upon him, um, continue to increase knowledge in all of us and Amen. wisdom for you, for all of us. May Allah continue to guide you and grant you peace and, and happiness. Um, and security and success in this world and in the next. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.